Wow, guys, welcome to the Personal PR Show, to another episode of the Personal PR Show. And today we're here with Paolo. Paolo is the CEO of a tech company, and also he's a podcaster. And we're here today to talk about, let's read the title, how to talk about complex topics in a way that even outsiders will understand. Right, Paolo? Do you feel... <laughs> I think you feel nice about Hi. this topic. Uh, thank, you. thank you for having me. I hope I can help. <laughs> <laughs> Very modest. Of course you can help because you have a podcast that is all about tech, especially AI, right? Yes. And you talk about it yourself and other guests talk about it, like your guests talk about it in a way that it's very understandable, even for outsiders, even for people who don't work in AI, right? Okay. How do you do that? Oh, that's, I mean, that's a bit the, the goal of the podcast, right? So uh, what we, so I'm a tech person, so I, um, and I've been working most of my, my career with technical people, with tech people. And I know that uh, it's not always easy to um, to get the message across, right? We uh, we tend to stay within our world and very technical, and it's difficult to explain what we do. So the goal, one of the goals of the podcast is that, is that we talk about, okay, this is the technology this is what you can do with the technology. This is the impact it's going to have on your business, or this is the problem that we solve um, uh, on on everyday life and give people examples of things that they already do that involve AI or that they already use um, and kind of demystify, demystify the topic of it. Yeah, exactly. Wow. This is amazing. And we will get into the details of that. But before we do, let's take a step step back. Would you like to maybe introduce yourself and tell us who you are, what you do, and how you decided to start a podcast about AI? Oh, uh, okay. Where do I start? So as <laughs> I said, good. as I said, I'm a tech guy. So I, I'm, I have a background in uh, computer science and in um machine learning. So I did a master's in machine learning in 2003. So that's almost 20 years ago, way before there was this uh, AI hype. I was yeah. already working with machine learning. Then I worked around 10 years in the space industry. So that was European Space Agency and then European Southern Observatory. I was a sort of a, a scientific software engineer. I think hmm. nowadays that would be called data scientist or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, there was no concept of data science back then. Uh, we were just all engineers. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then like uh, around 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I moved to insurance. And there, basically, uh, that's how the journey to client, let's apply this to business uh, started. So there... Uh, and the insurance, I uh, worked for a global insurance, uh, reinsurance company in Zurich. Actually, that's uh, where you and I met. And and uh, uh, in Zurich. And and then there, my, my, my job was to build a sort of an innovation unit within the insurance, uh, the, the global insurance company to, uh, to deliver innovation using technology. So we had the team of business experts, data scientists and engineers that kind of um, from a um, funnel of ideas, of innovate, innovative ideas, kind of brought them to life, right? And out of that funnel uh, of 100 ideas, maybe only a few, five to 10 actually came to life, mm -hmm. which is what innovation is about. And, mm -hmm. and during that process, I learned not only how to translate kind of... Uh, <laughs> one world, uh, basically making the bridge between the tech world and the business world, but also learn the kind of the, the language that you need to use to um, to talk to business people who are not as tech savvy as we are, as we techies are, and, uh, and kind of uh, help make that bridge. Then um, five, six years ago now, I decided to do the same thing, but outside in the market and started my own company consultancy uh, in insurance and um, the company is called Two Impulse and we 
help companies in insurance, but also in healthcare, automotive, and um, in basically uh, innovating using technology. Right. So, right. so how how does the pod how did the podcast idea start? It started more or less one year ago. I was working with a um, uh, with a friend of mine. He was helping me, um, kind of with my presence, online presence, especially my presence on LinkedIn and kind of uh, gave me some advice there. So I started becoming more active on LinkedIn and uh, becoming, becoming a content creator on LinkedIn, which is uh, uh, something that is still missing. There's um, most people don't create content. Most people participate or just watch, yeah. but they don't create content. So I started creating content on LinkedIn and started writing uh, blogs more like regularly and um, and kind of from that uh, to the podcast was a sort of a one more step uh, what we realized that podcast is very interesting because you can get to invite pe people to discuss ideas and then out of those conversations you can actually generate um, more interesting content so you can take a a topic that you discussed in a conversation and write a blog post about it or uh, or share something on LinkedIn and this and, and this basically enriches the whole the whole experience mm -hmm. and helps build uh, the brand which is what we're also working on so that people the goal is that people actually uh, that we deliver this value we discuss real things that are valuable to discuss and that people also find us this way as a company yeah that, that we are found uh, instead of being us looking for people that people find us because we have something of value to offer even before they buy anything from us yes absolutely oh my god i love it this is a great strategy for visibility absolutely that is awesome and um so you said that the journey started with you um like the journey let's say of you being able to explain complex and technical content <laughs> to outsiders as well to non-tech people it started back in insurance where you were working with a lot of business people right and now it continues yes. with the podcast what is more difficult <laughs> to talk to you know just the general audience about you know tech stuff or was it more difficult to talk to um business people about um, tech stuff i mean some some of the people we invite are business people. Some people are tech. Uh, uh, it's a good question. I there are two different things. I think that um, uh, when you're talking to a business person about technology, uh, I always try to find the kind of well, I mean, why is this useful to this person, and and try to give them like an everyday example something that connects to their business something that they know very well and then bring the technology and and kind of uh, make that bridge basically you can't just talk about the technology by mm -hmm. itself that doesn't help so you need to kind of always make the connection between what does this mean actually for the business and and that's the challenge it's not always easy um mm -hmm. but in the end technology is a means to an end it's not the end Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now it, the job is to find what is the end what is the purpose of this technology and right. and for that you need to understand learn about the business yeah right i mean in, in insurance the technology is about uh making something more efficient for example there is a lot of paperwork involved in insurance so you can uh, use technology to make that easier either to replace the paper or at least make the paperwork uh, easier or automated somehow mm -hmm. but you can also uh, help an uh, insurance company uh, evaluate a risk better um, mm -hmm. uh, making better uh, making better uh, better assumptions about the risk making I mean understanding better what they are actually underwriting what what risks they are actually covering. But also at customer serving, making the customer's life easier. But in the in the end, it's about uh, making people's life easier, yes. and, and that in connection with that particular business. Mm. 
Definitely. And that's and that's the the effort. That's what's difficult. <laughs> That's the effort. Exactly. So basically, like, um, guys, our goal, the first gold nugget, nugget in this conversation is if you want to e explain something complex and um, tech heavy to somebody who's not from tech, then you should consider that actually tech is a means to an end. It's not the end itself. Right. So let's think about the end. Right. How, right. OK, so great. So how can we so to say, speak the language of the person that we're talking to, which is basically what they're interested in. Usually it's the end, right? So it's the bottom line, right. it's the result and so on. So, so you ask good. them questions, right? right? Yeah. You ask them questions. So you ask, okay, give them an example of something, a part of your business or part of our everyday life where you have a challenge. Then they give you that example. You take that example and, and uh, basically explain to them or uh, kind of, uh, discuss with them if you bring technology now or this type of technology to the table how, how does that change what is this what is the situation before you had the technology and what is the situation after you had the technology and that's but you need to pick on what they say on their point of view because otherwise they'll just uh, you're just talking about tech and uh, and if they are not really interested uh, mm -hmm. That doesn't work. I mean, people are interested in their situation, in their challenges, in their problems. And that's where you should start. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So like uh, um, we should focus on the person that we're, talk we're talking to, not really on ourselves. Like I always say, like in public yes. relations, so on, we should make it about them, not about us. Right. Definitely. So should we reach to really yes. start where they are already, meet them where they are? Certainly. Right. Yeah. Of course. You can always, um, uh, if it's not easy for them to start, and that's not always easy, right? You can always try and inspire people somehow uh, with giving them uh, examples. But you need to give them examples, maybe even from other industries of things that are being done with the technology. It's not the technology itself that matters. It's what's being achieved with the technology that matters. And you can try to inspire them with examples of what was done. Yeah. And then that might raise ideas on their side. Okay, we could also apply this here. Yeah. But you need to give people examples of how this complex, scary thing like artificial intelligence can be used in particular in concrete situations so that people better can better understand. Because the yes. problem, especially the problem with AI and uh, is that people think that AI is a is like they see in the movies, like a, gen, a general artificial intelligence that is going to uh, destroy humanity, take over the world? It's not. <laughs> it's not, and uh, we are very, very far from that from general AI. And usually, it's a computer program uh, that is very good at doing one thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and in that thing, it can be actually outperform humans in certain things, uh, mm -hmm. um, but it's not a generic intelligence uh, yeah. like people see in the movies, like a, like a robot that can make jokes like three CPO and things like that. It's not that doesn't exist. We are very very far from that. Very far. So how far are we from that? A hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on who you talk to. Um, one of my favorite authors is uh, um, an author called Kurzweil. He had a, a he wrote a book in the beginning of the century called "The Singularity Is Near," where he predicts that in uh, twenty twenty nine um, computers will pass a thing called the Turing test, and uh, I'll explain what that is. And that 2050, around that time, uh, we'll reach the singularity. And that's that generic general intelligence that can do anything and can outperform humans on anything. <gasps> the, um, the, the Turing test is the, a test that was invented by Alan Turing. Um, Alan Turing is the father of computer science, um, mm -hmm. British um, a gentleman who lived uh, in the first part of the uh, the twentieth uh, century, and he defined the Turing test as a test where you are interacting with the machine, mm -hmm. and 
after interacting for a period of time, you're still not sure if it's a machine or a human. And that's when the machine passed the Turing test, right? So if you're not sure if it's a human, wow. it's after you interacted with it for half an hour, one hour, you're still not sure, then the machine has passed the Turing test. Mm -hmm. And Kurzweil predicts that that will happen in seven years. And that it, the it, it is nearly 2023. 20, wow. I'm sorry, nearly, in, two, in two weeks, it, it will already be 2023, so it will be done in six years. Until in six years, yes, oh in six years. And the, the community oh. kind of agrees with him when he came up first with the prediction. Uh, there was uh, outrage, this is this is too fast, but the yeah. community now basically agrees with him and that this is going to happen. Uh, a few weeks ago, there was a, a, a toy, a sort of a toy released by um, an organization called OpenAI mm -hmm. and called ChatGPT. I don't know if you tried it. If you haven't tried, because it's amazing. It, 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 sometimes you, you even think it's a person. <gasps> it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite incredible. You can you can trick it very easily, and and you realize it's not a person. But uh, I mean, uh, if you think about it, we we'll still have seven years to get there. So, um, this, so this is the this is the prediction, and I think it's realistic. Mm. What does but this mean to mankind? Uh, that that uh, remains to be seen. Exactly. But there's so much resistance around this, right? So I got my, I got scared myself when you told me that this is coming up in 2029, already in six years, basically. So, But so this is just the Turing test, right? This is not general intelligence. This is a machine that looks like it's very intelligent. It's, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it looks now. like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the real singularity will be theoretically achieved in 2050, you said? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, that's another 30 years, more or less. Yes. Yeah. And, I and, that's really, and that's really intelligent and outperforms humans in most things. And it's dangerous. Is it dangerous? Is it going to be dangerous, do you think? It could it be if it's, if, it, if, it's, uh, if it's used for the wrong thing. Yes. That's yeah, because it's just means. And at the end of the day, you have to see what is done with these means, right? Oh, my God. And um, yes, so we've seen that I have a little bit of resistance myself. Mm -hmm. So have you noticed perhaps that people when they, especially because you're talking about AI all the time, that when they get resistance around this topic, that then they kind of block and block That's off true. and then not possible to talk to them anymore and then for them to for you to have them understand what you know all of this tech and ai and so on is about it becomes more difficult because that you see a wall before them it does it does um indeed it does yeah. i mean um, what i and i'm not always successful in kind of opening people back like a um what I try to do is give them concrete examples. So I go back to the to the um, to the examples and kind of give them concrete instances, situations where AI is very useful and it's not scary at all, right? Mm -hmm. uh, very useful. Actually, it it helps us as humans and that it can actually free us from things that humans shouldn't be doing, like paperwork. I mean. Imagine your job is, and this is an example that I give, uh, very easy to understand. Imagine your job is you work for a health insurance company, and your job is sitting at your desk every day, mm -hmm. um, opening letters from customers. They have like medical receipts and pharmacy uh, uh, receipts and things like that. And you take the receipts one by one, and you type what's in these receipts in some computer program mm -hmm. and you keep in typing data that's your what you do you you do data data entry and you get the documents you can also sometimes they come scan they come they arrive scan in an email box but it's the same so you open them you go and you okay okay this is the the, the amount and then i put it here so you spend your day um with data entry that's it that's what you do paper uh, and there yeah. is thousands and thousands of people doing this right, that yes. only do this 
all, all day long for, for decades, right? A computer can do that, right? And uh, you might argue, okay, and people will not have a job. Well, is this really a good job? Is this really a good abuse of somebody's time, right? It's mm -hmm. not. A machine mm -hmm. should be doing this tedious, repetitive yes. work. And humans should be free to do something else. Mm -hmm. So this is just one example, but th there are so many jobs like this. Mm -hmm. right? and, okay. and I'm just talking, and I'm talking about desk jobs, right? Not mentioning mm -hmm. jobs, people doing dangerous things like uh, in construction. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, you heard recently about, I mean, there was a big topic lately about the, the World Cup in Qatar, how many people have died in building those stadiums. Well, maybe you shouldn't have people doing these jobs. You should have machines doing these dangerous jobs, especially if it's 40 degrees Celsius mm -hmm. temperature. So this machines, AI can free us to do something else. Yeah. And, so and this is positive. This is not a threat to humanity. In, con in the contrary, it will free us to do something more useful. Yes, totally and useful and satisfactory. And, and so when you bring these examples, do people open up a little bit? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they when? do. No, but I, uh, I like doing my job. People like people. So what happens when people don't have jobs, right? This is the typical thing. And well, it's a good question. But this is not new. This, this is a phenomenon that has been occurring since the, especially since the Industrial Revolution. Yes. And difference now is that is that um, the evolution is faster. Uh, and the, the jobs, people's jobs change faster mm -hmm. um, than before. Uh, my parents' generation had a job their entire lives. Mm -hmm. Our generation is not like that. Our children uh, will probably uh, have a different type of job every uh, five years. Who knows? Uh, so this, there is fast change, and this is scary, obviously. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's not always, it's not an easy topic, no. <laughs> Definitely not. But I like the fact that you can say, well, this is actually an opportunity also in, to create new jobs, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I am I would not underestimate the social impact that um, the fact that some jobs will become obsolete or disappear. Mm. Um, and the social um, the social implications of that, uh, on the one hand, I would not underestimate that. I think there will be uh, social challenges with that. On the other hand, there's new jobs being created all the time. I mean, there are jobs nowadays that are, if you told me 10 years ago, I wouldn't believe it, that they would <laughs> exist. And yeah. people are making money with them and, and, and having fun. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, just think about YouTubers and TikTokers and... Uh, and there's also new tech jobs with the whole uh, with the whole metaverse, uh, mm -hmm. for example. You're gonna have uh, new new categories of jobs that never existed before, like uh, I don't know, virtual marketing specialist or mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, virtual virtual world designer. Uh, mm -hmm. This kind of thing never existed before, and they will exist. So. Mm -hmm. um, and what I think is a lot more difficult, and because humans are we are social uh, creatures, right? We we are social creatures. We need each other. We need in interaction with each other. And I think that's going to be more and more valuable in the future. So I believe that people will be more valuable when and at jobs when contact with other people is is involved and this is and this is where people should be spending more time mm -hmm. not not like on an assembly pipeline doing the same thing a thousand times a day or even in a desk mm -hmm. um spending time with other people doing more creative things mm -hmm. um i mean there is there's a lot of work to be done that's not being done because people are busy doing tedious mindless things 
Is that right? Isn't it true? <laughs> yeah, today. I mean, that's why I got myself a VA, of course, <laughs> who's now my relationship manager. She, you know, we, we changed her title a few months ago because she's so great with people. She's dealing with people all the time. I don't have to do it myself anymore because I love dealing with people, but I don't have the time. So to scale, of course, I hired her. <laughs> But, um, but you know, usually before I outsource anything, delegate anything to her, I we always try to automate it. But there are still some things that can't be automated yet. So hence, you know, I need help, right? And um, and yeah, but sometimes I'm sad for her because she needs to do a lot of manual work, not data entry, but like maybe, you know, talk to chase different people and and stuff of that kind. So we really hope that an AI and, you know, the tech goes further and further so then even those tasks can be yeah. outsourced yeah and then she can do more fun stuff definitely for example to my lovely relationship manager certainly yes i mean there's certainly so many things that that i find myself doing every day as well that i am um, like this is <sighs> yeah you too probably still right paolo yeah me too. <laughs> I try to delegate. I try to automate, but of course, uh, some tedious things always still end up in my desk <laughs> that I don't enjoy doing. But uh, it, I think it's a constant kind of struggle. But um, you kind of hand over some things, or you or you get rid of some things, and new things keep appearing somehow. <laughs> uh, but I, I I try to to uh, not to do tedious things and um, and I also uh, I mean delegating is obviously an option to me, mm -hmm. but then the person that gets the task might not have that option. So uh, uh, trying to simplify is always good yeah, and absolutely. automate or automate. Yeah, simplify, automate, and then if you think about if you think about like. Um, uh, when people say, "Oh, then people will not have jobs," but on the other hand, uh, you list, you you read the news saying there's not enough teachers, there's not enough nurses, there's not enough uh, people taking care of the elder, uh, there's not, um, uh, I mean, there's not enough people to take care of other people or to uh, or to teach other people or to train other people, uh, and uh, so why not why not mm -hmm. because people maybe earn more money doing something else mm -hmm. pushing paper right yeah. now mm -hmm. there's something wrong with that mm -hmm. <laughs> pushing paper should not be more valuable than taking care of another human being should not but it but our economic system rewards paper pushers more than teachers in many in many cases and and that's a problem. So uh, this also needs to change. And I believe technology is a vehicle to, to achieve that. Yeah, definitely. So what do you think that we will be able to automate in the next, I don't know, five years? For Let's talk about entrepreneurs <laughs> because we're all entrepreneurs yeah. in this group. Let's just talk about entrepreneurs. What do you think will be easier, much easier in five years, thanks to AI? You mean as an entrepreneur, uh, like as a yeah. business manager or as an entrepreneur in as what a, capacity, what part? Yeah, I would say as a business owner. So probably do you think we will have like because a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, especially digital entrepreneurs, they have VAs, right? They have systems and they have VAs. So which mm -hmm. is what I have as well. Do you think there will be mm -hmm. like the, the focus will be even more on systems? And so VAs will have less tasks mm -hmm. to do, but maybe more rewarding stuff tasks instead of manual ones um i mean that that's a good question i um i, I think there's a lot of good tools already now uh, nowadays to become an entrepreneur I, if i think i think being an entrepreneur starting a business today is much easier than it was 10 or 20 years ago um because you have all these tools that help you yeah uh so and that will continue to to happen. So, uh, I mean, now in the other day, the other day I was looking at uh, uh, like a, at a post on LinkedIn where there was this um, slide deck where you could actually start a, a company and come and 
a tech company. If you start a company and have a minimum viable product, the first product on the market in one month. Huh. Right? Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and we just one person right? or two, like it was like a, a one tech founder, right? Because you needed a person to be a bit technical and, and one more person. So two people could get uh, start a company and get a product on the market and get a few paying customers within one month. Oh my God, and, and, that and, and that's amazing. So of course, of course, the, the, it was like the uh, it was a sort of an ideal situation when lots of things went well. But if you think about it, even if it takes three months, mm -hmm. it's still it's still extremely fast. And the case was convincing. You could actually do that. Uh, what mm -hmm. what it was being described at. And so nowadays you can automate, you can build an, a tech application, for example, there's all these no-code tools, so you don't need to be a programmer to, to build an app, for example. Mm -hmm. Like with middle tech skills, you can actually build an app and put it on, a, on the market, on the marketplace for like Google, Android. Mm -hmm. and, and then... You can create uh, you can create your online marketing campaigns so you can build up a website mm -hmm. and you can actually have people purchasing your app and coming to a website and purchasing and downloading your app and paying you uh, i mean and you can do all this with two people right because mm -hmm. you have such good tools and then you have uh, a customer relationship management to manage your your customers and your leads and you have i mean with three or four tools you can build a company yes that's crazy right, right. So, yeah. <laughs> no of course be. of course you need to have a product that people want right mm -hmm. this is this is this is the most important thing because it it all boils down to what people actually need to solve somebody's problem to help somebody uh, but if you have you can set up a company very quickly Mm -hmm. absolutely wow and it's going to be even like this trend is going to be even stronger in the next few years so there will be even yeah. more systems and that's yeah. simply so, automate, automate so, task so one one uh one key term you're probably going to hear more and more is is no code or low code so that allows mm -hmm. non-tech people to get tech products in the market mm -hmm. uh very quickly and this is one and then there's all kinds of automation tools also for social media, right? And so even for writing content, I go back to to that, what I uh, what I was just mentioning, chat GPT, right? Mm -hmm. You go to chat GPT, you say, oh, could you please write me a blog post about how to talk about complex topics in a way that even outsiders will understand? And I could give you an example of what that, what the blog post would be written by an AI, and it's amazing. Because it's the AI has learned based on millions and millions of uh, blog posts around the world, and it can actually give it just that title, and it's going to write a blog post for you. Oh now, God. then, of course, you have to take it and make it your own, maybe change it, but it's a it's a kind of a source of ideas. Mm -hmm. So it it boosts your creativity in yeah. ways that that never happened before so uh and and so this is another one so there's a tool to automate there are tools that can help you build an app very easily tech a, a tech app uh you can you can build websites nowadays very easily you can produce content very easily and, and distribute it to five different social media channels with one button click Wow. So you can you can use this AI, for example, to say, okay, write me a blog about this topic. Now, make it a Twitter, make it a tweet, make it a LinkedIn post, make it a Facebook post, mm -hmm. and it just does it for you. And you, in the end, you just need to edit it. So yeah. you have a a copywriter, yeah, uh, a copywriting assistant working yeah. for you. In the end, you just do the editing. Oh my God. Is this what you do for your content? Because you said no. that you have. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> no, but sometimes, but sometimes uh, I, I don't, I don't do that. Um, mm. But sometimes I admit I 
I use it for generating ideas. It's exactly like you use Google. Mm. Right? So you, if, if you want to write about a topic and you want to research a bit about it and you want to get ideas from here and there, you start reading things. Now, this is another tool you can use to help you mm -hmm. authoring yeah. your content because it can give you ideas. You can say, okay, give me uh, 10 bullet points about this topic. And it gives you 10 bullet points about this topic. And then you can choose which ones you want to use, which ones you want to take and change. Mm -hmm. But it does give you the, it does the research. It's like having an assistant. Okay, could you research and give me five bullet points about this topic? Imagine you asking that to an assistant. You can ask to th that to an AI now. That's so cool. Can you do this kind of research for me? Give me 10 bullet points. And then you take the, your three favorites, edit them, and there's mm -hmm. your post. Oh my God. And uh, I mean, you could also do that going to Google, getting ideas from different blog posts, going to mm. book, using books, publications, but you have an AI that can do that for you. Yeah, exactly. This so is this another. Is... Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I love talking about the future. Now, and by the way. There's, there's a downside to this is that if people really start using this AI to, um, to do authoring and create content online, then it's going to be hard to understand what was written by a person, what was written by an AI. And, but is it that very, is that very different from what happens now? How many people are copying each other's content online right now today? We don't know, mm -hmm. but for sure, there's a lot of content being copied around. Yeah. Uh, like, and so it's not that different. It's just one step further. It's gonna make uh, it's, it's gonna make it a bit more challenging to create genuine content that people mm -hmm. identify as yours, right? So that's why I'm really careful about that. I don't just copy it because then, well, if I go to this AI, in this case, it's for example ChatGPT, mm -hmm. and I ask it a question and I just take what it gives me and publish it, well. I, I run the risk that 10 other people do the same. And then, and then what's the point? There's no point. I need to make it my own. I need to put my own, add my own thoughts, make it, um, but it's a help. It's helping me. It's a start. Uh, it's a start. Yeah, it's helping me. Oh, I didn't think about that point. That's a good point. I'm, I'm going to add it and I'm going to write a bit about this. Right. So it, it, it really helps. Yeah. And by the way, let's get on a meta level for a second. You have been telling us over the past 10 minutes or so, we've been talking about not how to communicate about tech, but we've been talking about tech itself. And the mm -hmm. way you explained things to us about tech was pretty easy to understand. So we saw you yeah. in action. <laughs> Right, exactly. Right. Like so for us, it was easy to, to follow and to understand and internalize. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so you do do a great job. I I don't thank you. I don't have a secret. I, I I guess it's just experience. Yes. I just try to make it understandable. Um, to yeah. to to like the key is I I guess in every communication, right? In PR, same thing. You need to think about okay, who am I talking to, and then adjust the message. Yes. Exactly, and, and not just starting to throw acronyms. There's, this, there's one thing that bothers me when people start talking to me. They never met me before, and mm -hmm. they throw ten acronyms in the first sentence. Look, <laughs> think about who you're talking to, and, and yeah, no, totally. And this happens a lot. The acronyms. <laughs> oh yeah, like the the deeper you go into an industry, the more acronyms you will find, right? In aviation, yeah. oh my God, I'll tell you how many acronyms we have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Oh my God, yeah. This is some acronyms are some acronyms are cross industry, uh, yeah. and but many are not. The exact same acronym is used in different industries with different meanings, so it's it's quite oh. annoying. <laughs> No, absolutely. It can, can be very confusing. It can be very efficient, of course, but it can be very confusing. It depends on whom. So we, we're back at what you've just said. So communication is always about the people that you target person, the target yes. audience, right? Exactly. Once we know the target audience, then we know how to communicate. Mm, absolutely. 
And Paolo, we are, unfortunately, we are approaching the end of our conversation, but I have one last question. It's a question that I ask everybody. Let's see how you respond to it, which is, it's, very, it's a silly question in a way, but sometimes it can really trigger very cool answers. So the question goes, <laughs> Uh, what is a question that I haven't asked you yet over the past 45 minutes, but I should have asked you? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I can't think of anything right now. Um, or anything that you would like to say. Maybe it, shouldn't, it, it doesn't have to be the question itself. It can be yeah. answered directly. Yeah, so, um, I mean, let's go back to the topic, right? And uh, instead of, uh, instead of say, instead of telling you what you should have asked me, I'll try to, uh, going back to the topic of this conversation, how to talk about complex topics in a way that even outsiders will understand. Uh, so I don't have a magic bullet. I don't mm -hmm. have a silver bullet or magic bullet for this. So what I try to do is to, as we as we discussed to try to put myself in the other person's shoes um what does this person care about yeah and that's where we start we start from there if i'm not sure i ask what do you care about right? what is your passion what is your problem what is your challenge what uh what is your concern and and that's where we start and then i try to make the bridge from that to whatever I have to offer um, in terms of technology, which is what I what I know about, and mm -hmm. and that I think summarizes the conversation, mm -hmm. and that's I, that's the only way I know to mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to communicate. Um, so mm -hmm. you need to always start from the person you're talking to, mm -hmm. and adjust uh, the the message, yeah. and give examples. And, and, as give examples right like or either ask them to give examples if they can't come up with an example you try to come up with examples yourself but mm -hmm. examples real life examples of mm -hmm. how this technology or how this complex thing can be can make mm -hmm. sense to you and um yeah and and the other thing is about the topic of ai and and technology it is scary mm -hmm. but um it's here to help us and uh it's here to free humans from things that humans shouldn't be doing right. yes. I, I mean there is one uh an author um harari he wrote a couple of books about uh there was sapiens was the first book he wrote and uh homo deus and then he wrote a third one and basically he says that uh, i mean humans had the first kind of the uh the first generation of humans were the hunter gatherers mm -hmm. and these humans um were the most free as a as a, like human beings that ever existed mm -hmm. there are always there are also negative aspects to that but then they became farmers and, mm -hmm. uh, and but becoming farmers turned humans into slaves mm -hmm. slaves of their own making becoming mm -hmm. farmers because they became slaves of this um they kind of started going to this hamster wheel where they needed to produce more food the population kept increasing they keep kept to produce more food and growing and growing and kind of entered this endless loop of slavery which kind of survives until today the industrial revolution only accelerated that yes. like and the people they earn more money they People earn more money. They 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 start they up they up their living standards. Then they get more debt. They they need to earn more money again. The, the, the higher their salary, the more the higher their expenses, and they keep slaving away their entire lives. That's the majority of humans, even in the developed, uh, industrialized, rich world. This happens, mm -hmm. uh, and um, technology, in my view, is the way to break out of that. Mm -hmm to break out of this uh kind of slavery in which we uh, most humans live and uh that started since the agricultural revolution and, and this is scary but it, i i believe it's the only way for humans to break out of this 
pattern is with technology. Yes. I love that. Yes, absolutely. And but for technology, we need energy, like in the sense of electricity, right? So what's going to happen now? And we have to go very soon. But what <laughs> yeah. happens now if we have no energy or, or electricity anymore? Are we going to go back to slavery or to manual work? Well, the, like, the energy exists. We just need to new technology. to <laughs> The energy is there. I mean, the energy doesn't disappear, right? And, uh, so it's just we just need to new technology to um, to be smarter about it, right? yeah. uh, to generate energy or capture energy in in a smarter way, because yeah. the energy already exists. Mm -hmm. It's there to be caught let's say yeah. um it, it's a transition i believe mm -hmm. that we need to go through um yeah i don't think i i, I think that's a technical problem that humankind can solve mm -hmm. if it's Weird. gonna be on time um uh, be, i mean there is an ecological problem with climate change now um i don't know how fast we can be Mm -hmm. um but uh but i think the energy uh problem will be solved it's a technical problem that we can solve also with it's AI. a matter of time ai will certainly help wow. mm -hmm. yeah yeah for sure so we need meta technology meta ai so ai that works on <laughs> ai so to say. So the Met <laughs> maybe this is also uh, like uh, an AI that uh, watches, make sure that AI doesn't get out of control <laughs> in some exactly cases. That. AI um, police. <laughs> it might be. Oh my God, this is amazing. Might be. I mean, technology can be used for bad things, right? Um, so that's true. Uh, AI can be used to do a lot of harm, but it can yeah. be also used to do a lot of good. So we, we, yeah, we need to regulate it, and we need to to, to watch it. The AI is not the only um, danger. Right? There's others like genetics mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that are also um, and also need to be uh, regulated and watched. Absolutely! Wow! Oh my God! I love the the, the direction of this conversation. <laughs> So much to talk about it but unfortunately we are at the end of our conversation today paolo also because in uh, um five minutes we have another interview if you want to come to, to and and hear how ivona tells us how to establish yourself as a keynote speaker that is invited oh. to come all over the world right also okay. in the paper capacity join us in five minutes <laughs> this is what I'll, we're gonna i will talk. try thank yeah? you thank you for having me it was a pleasure yeah. It has been so much fun. Thank you so much. We've learned so much from you. All of the golden nuggets that you kindly also summarized at the end. This has been amazing. And you have to come back to the show, please. Tell us, promise us here and now that you will come back. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Let's, let's organize it. Yeah, definitely. I'll let um, Chair, our relationship manager, know. Perfect. Thank All you right. so much. For that. Have Thank fun you. in Munich. It's snowing Munich. I hope I assume that it's snowing as it's snowing here in Zurich. It is snowing. We have like uh, 30, 40 centimeters snow today. More than here. Okay, then enjoy the snow <laughs> and, the and so on. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Right. Thank you so much, Paolo. And thank you so much, guys, for watching. And I'll thank see you, you at me. the next episode of the Personal PR Show.